All right, guys, Rich here from the RC Network, and this is going to be episode two of my LOSI Mini 8T upgrade series. So I went ahead and I addressed uh, just a few of the durability issues in the last episode, uh, picked up quite a few of the hot racing items that were intended for the Mini 8 buggy, and they actually worked uh, for the Truggy as well. So now we're on to uh, some of the LOSI parts that are available. Uh, specifically for the T and some also for the buggy and also uh, we're going to be upgrading the rod ends or the ball ends uh, for the uh, uh, turnbuckles. So um, first thing I did is I picked up some of these RPM rod ends. These are their heavy duty series. Uh, 440 is the size and it comes in a set of 12 which is perfect uh, for the amount of turnbuckles that you need to do. Now you do have uh, two sets in the rear, two in the front, and also two for the steering, and that equals out to 12 ends. So one package will pretty much do the job of one uh, Mini 8. So um, pick these up. Uh, one thing you do want to keep in mind, you want to have a set of calipers um, on hand just to um, take some initial measurements, but also keep in mind that uh, the low seat rod ends and the RPM rod ends may be different in size. So you want to uh, just double check that. Mine happened to be the same. So I went ahead and did the same end to end uh, sizing with my calipers. So um, pretty easy to change those out. You do want to keep in mind the orientation of the little slot right here. Um, on most turnbuckles, they're going to have some kind of uh, a mark on one side of the turnbuckle. It's really hard to see here on camera, but you'll see a little notch uh, right past where you uh, insert the wrench. Uh, that does need to go on the USA passenger side of the vehicle um, or on uh, the right side if you're standing behind the vehicle. So uh, keep that in mind when you're doing your, your turnbuckles. It just makes things easier. So I went ahead and replaced those. The reason why I did that was uh, pretty much because I, I, I popped quite a few uh, rod ends uh, with the stock ones while I was doing some of those running videos. So uh, great cure here, and this should be pretty much uh, the last time I need to uh, deal with any of the rod end issues. So um, a couple other things I picked up from Losi. Uh, the, the first thing was I picked up a new servo mount. Uh, this is their aluminum one. It's intended for the Mini 8. Uh, there's a quick part number. There's going to be links in the video description, so you can check that out if you'd like. Um, but pretty much just the uh, aluminum servo mount. So instead of having uh, the plastic one that kind of uh, gets distorted once you mount your servo in, I picked up the aluminum ones, and we'll see right here, uh, they're just very minimalistic. Um, just basically two uh, right-angle servo mounts, and it mounts right in there. Uh, same spacing and everything already test fit the servo, everything looks good. So last thing I picked up here, um, you, know, you can never do a <laughs> RC car these days or, or at least upgrade it without adding some carbon fiber. And I definitely did here. Um, I picked up uh, these uh, graphite part set. This is specifically for the uh, Mini 8T and you'll notice that there's a longer uh, model number now on all of the T-specific parts. Just to give you an idea here, here is the, uh, the buggy has a four digit after the LOSB, and these are LOS, and it has a five or six digit number. So keep that in mind when you're ordering, just so you make sure you're getting the T-specific parts. So this graphite part set includes not only the front and rear shock tower, but also a battery brace, which I happen to already have the uh, carbon fiber hot racing one. So I'm going to stick with that one for now, but I do have an extra uh, uh, carbon fiber brace here just in case of anything happens. So I went ahead and I, I treated all of my carbon fiber, at least the shock towers, with uh, some CA glue on all the edges. Um, I went ahead and you can kind of see the glistening up here of the CA glue just to protect the edges. You know, this is an, an outdoor vehicle and it's definitely going to take a beating. So I want to protect those edges to make sure nothing starts to fray or get hit or anything. So, um, but there's the front uh, carbon shock tower. We'll see the rear back here. Rear went on really easy, just a few uh, screws to get that one in, but everything looks good. You can kind of see some whiteness down here from the CA glue reacting to uh, fingerprints. So um, probably wipe that off later. Um, last thing I did add, um, I think I said last time, uh, just prior to this, but the last thing I did add uh, was these uh, front CV drive shafts. 
um, I had an issue with the stock ones um, on the front only where I actually bent uh, two of them. So I picked up these front CV drive shafts uh, specifically for Mini 8T. Make sure, keep that in mind because they are longer than the Mini 8. Um, and uh, everything works out good. Uh, however, I think I ended up with the rears and the package. So you can kind of see here, if we focus right in on that out drive, I'm barely in uh, that thing. So I think uh, I test fit these on the rear. They fit perfect on the rear. So I'm gonna call uh, Horizon Hobby and see what they can do for me here. So um, I went ahead and added those in. Everything looks good. Only thing I, I, I wish they had was I wish wish they had a, a, a captured pin setup. Pretty much the uh, the pin goes in. There's no uh, set screw and there's no ring, uh, but pretty much the bearing is going to keep that ring or that uh, that pin inside. So, but uh, always good to add uh, front uh, universals uh, just for steering and get you a little bit better angle and uh, no binding. I think that was the issue with um, why I bent a couple of them uh, during my running video. So, uh, anyways, that's it for episode two. Um, episode three and four are going to start tackling uh, some of the electronics uh, in the Mini 8T. Uh, episode three is definitely going to go over the servo that I chose. And then episode four will go over not only the motor, uh, what pinion I'm going to run, and also the ESC. So definitely stay tuned for that. Once again, guys, any comments, questions, please post them on down below. And as always, thumbs up and subscribe. That's it for now, guys. Over now.